Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today we're going to talk about static events. I'm going to show you how to use them to decouple your code a little bit and just make things a little cleaner and a little simpler. So I've got a demo set up here where I can click on these boxes and a particle plays. As I click, particle plays on whatever box and then you can see in the hierarchy they're getting cleaned up eventually. So let's take a look at how this works first in the simple mode and then I'll show you the static events that I use to clean it up. So let's open up this. Well, we have two files here we have a clickable box and a particle controller and they are both just suffixed with the word tight these are the tightly coupled ones so here in this particle controller the way it works is we have a prefab right there in a serialized field so that it shows up in the inspector it's just a private game object and then we have a public method that spawns a particle on a box it takes a box creates a particle by instantiating the prefab right here at the box's position and just a default rotation. And then we destroy the particle after three seconds just to clean it up so we don't end up with a particle lingering around if it's not a self-cleaning one. So what, what does the clickable box look like? Let's take a look. Here we've got a collider and a particle controller that we cache. You can see in awake we cache the collider with a get component to collider and the particle controller with a find object of type for the particle controller. Now I noted here that this could just be a singleton. We could do like particle controller dot instance or something to get it as well. But I didn't want to go in and overcomplicate things. So here we've got just this reference to a particle controller. And if as we go down, you'll see that in update, we check to see if they clicked. We do a ray cast. So first let's see. We get a ray based on the camera, the main camera, and we should really cache this too. I, I mention this every now and then but this is not cached and it's relatively slow. Here it wouldn't really matter though. But we use camera.main.screenpoint to ray and we give it the mouse position that just tells it to create a ray from where we clicked into the world. And then here we're using collider.raycast. We give it the ray, the hit info, and a distance. Now if you haven't used collider.raycast, you can just use this on any collider to just raycast against that specific object. So if we do hit the object though, so if we hit this, in fact we don't really even care about the hit info, probably don't need that there, but if we do hit this object, we just spawn a particle on this object. So we call that particle controller dot spawn particle right here and it spawns the, the, the object here. So what's the issue here? Well the biggest problem that I have with this solution, and don't get me wrong, I, I use solutions like this quite often and it's not like it's terrible and it's going to destroy everything but it's just this reference back to the particle controller the fact that i have to either have this as a singleton and know about it in my and or i have to find it and then cache it and call back into it what i don't like is having this basically two directional coupling so the clickable box knows about particle controllers particle controller knows about clickable box and it makes it a lot harder to separate and abstract these things out. Also, if I wanted to add something else to this clickable box, I wanted something else to happen when I click on it, maybe I want a sound effect to play too, then I'm gonna end up doing something like private sound controller, no, sound controller, caching that, and then down here I'd be like, you know, sound controller dot play sound on a box or whatever. So I want to avoid that and minimize having to go back in and change my clickable box every time I want to respond to it. And I want to get rid of this coupling here. So that's where these static events come in really handy. So how does that work? Well, let's open up the other scene here, this demo scene, instead of demo tight. And um, I'm not going to play it yet, but I'm just going to show that we have exactly the same stuff, except we're using the clickable box and a particle controller without tight. And I changed the particle to cold. So how does this work? Well, let's look at the clickable box script. And here, the first thing, and basically the key part of this whole video, it, we start off with this static event action of type clickable box named any on any box clicked. And here I'm just assigning an empty delegate. So that way if something calls it and it's not registered for, it'll be fine and we don't have to do a null check on it because I'm still not using 4.5 in this version for some reason. So we've got this event right here, and we still cache the collider, but we no longer have any reference to a particle controller. Instead, in our update, we go through the same exact process. All of this is the same. The only difference is that we now call on any box clicked, and we pass in the box that was clicked. 
because the way this works, this is not on the clickable box. So it does, it's not gonna know what object is firing this event off. We don't register it for the specific box. We register it for just this event on anything. Technically, well, if it weren't an event here, just about anything could call this and invoke it. Since we have the event keyword, only this is gonna be able to invoke it, but any clickable box can do it. So this could be clickable box one, two, three, four, or five, whatever it is, it'll all call this same event, so we only have to register for it once. And we just pass in the object that we're firing off for. In fact, we don't even necessarily have to pass that in. So how does this work on the particle controller side? Well, if we look here in the particle controller, we still have the prefab, but now we have an awake method. And in awake, we call clickable box dot any box on any box clicked, and we do plus equals spawn particle on box, which is just going to make it so whenever this on any box is on any box clicked is called, we will spawn a particle on that box. And because this has a clickable box as the parameter there, see system dot action type clickable box, we need this clickable box parameter here because that's going to pass it into our callback right here. And then here we just do the same thing. We just spawn the particle. But now our clickable box no longer knows about particle systems or particle controllers. And our particle controller could theoretically even get a little bit less coupled. But I don't think we need to worry about it. I think we're good enough here just going down to, down to one way here. So how would we do this with actions if we weren't doing static ones? Well, in that case, we would have to know about when a clickable box is spawned. So if we were doing this without the static here, right, let's just show it real quick. So I get rid of static, particle controller is now going to have an error here because on any box clicked doesn't exist. So we would have to find the clickable boxes. Perhaps we could do something like for each bar box in find objects of type, clickable box and then loop through each box and do box dot on click plus equals spawn particle on box. We could do something like that. And um, and we'd have to go back through and deregister them, but we'd have an event here. And obviously we would rename this to not be on any box. It'd be like on box clicked. Whoops, there we go. Just like that. And we change this to that. It'd be something uh, along these lines. The problem here though is that again, we, this is only going to get them right at the start. It's going to find all of the boxes here. Let's get that. It would find all of the boxes and register the event. But as new boxes spawn, we're not registered for those things events. We'd have to have whatever is spawning the boxes, then set up this whole registration. Also, as the boxes despawn, we need to make sure that we unregister those events. So we need to have a whole lifecycle management system in there for these little boxes that really don't need it. They don't need to spawn anytime and I don't really need that um, that registration and deregistration happening. In fact, ideally I want to avoid registering and deregistering events over and over. If it's something that's only going to live a very short time, something that's going to spawn, maybe go fly over, do something, and then get destroyed, maybe it's a, a missile or something that's flying off. I don't want to be registering and deregistering events for these constantly. It's not bad for a couple of them, but if you get up to the point where you're doing it just a, a lot, you're going to start just slowing down your game. You're, or at least you're adding extra performance hits for no real benefit. Instead, I generally just prefer to go with this other method. Just go back to the, uh, the nice static event right here. Oh, I've broken it all. But I think you have the idea. So we go back to all. static right here. And change that back to on any. And it just kind of works. So where would I not use this? Oh, whoops, I got the order here wrong. Um, I wouldn't use this necessarily for long living objects that have events that their children are listening to, or for things where a specific object wants to listen to a specific other object. So if we had things like a, um, let me think of something, perhaps we had a player and whenever you click on a box, maybe we have like two players in our game. Whenever you click on a box, whichever box that player is assigned to, that player gets points. I don't want to go with a generic method there. Instead, I prob well, actually, to be honest, maybe I would and just put the player number in there. But there are some cases like that where 
I want a specific object to know about events from another object and not know about them from other ones because it doesn't care about them and I don't want to add a check to say like, hey, is this clickable box mine? No. Like, um, oh, here's a good example. Weapon systems, say you're building a spaceship, you have a lot of weapon systems on the ship. So you've got like a ship and then you've got lots of weapon subcomponents. In that case, I want to register for the fire method on the spaceship, but I don't want to register for every fire method for every spaceship. So I don't want to use a static one there. I would want to find the specific ship that's like the owner of that object and then register for the fire event on there. So maybe I'll show that in another video too, just how to hook up events with subcomponents and children and make all that work nice and simple and clean. If you're interested in that, uh, drop a comment below and I'll prioritize that. If nobody does, then I'll skip past it. Anyway, I hope this is somewhat helpful. Uh, I use these static events all the time, especially in smaller projects or in situations where there's things that I know I'm just gonna wanna bolt on later and I don't need to know about the specific instance of the object. I may need to know which object it is, but I don't care because uh, I always wanna do something no matter what the object is. Um, anyway, I, I keep talking about it. I'll just say thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the alert button, and share with your friends. And uh, that's it. Thanks again.